Okay, so, <laughs> hi, it's Saturday. I did not update throughout the week at all because it was a rough week. I'm very tired, but I have my first round of coffee. I have a book box to unbox with you, which I'm very excited about. One of my favorite books of the year is in it. The theme is one of my favorite themes for books, not real life. We hate the circus in real life. We don't support it. BT Barnum suck, but Hugh Jackman rocks them. And I'm gonna update you on the books that I'm reading, and then we're gonna go to Barnes and Noble together. Does that sound fun? Sounds fun to me. So let's let's do this. So first of all, let's do the haul slash unboxing, which I'm sure I'll haul more when I get home from Barnes and Noble. But Eddie use what Eddie use. So I just filmed my unboxing for the Illumicrate Darker Shade of Magic box. So I don't know when that is gonna go up. I'm gonna put it up probably next Saturday. So this will be up on Tuesday. So if you don't want to see any spoilers, look away now. Skip ahead. But I wanted to show you just the uh, dust covers that came in it because oh my god, they're beautiful. I've never been able to get Illumicrate dust jackets because I want the cruel print set and those dust jackets so much and honestly if I could find all of them for $500 I might save up and do that but some of like individual books are going for $500 and I'm just like man I'm like not there my bank account she's not there either so I'm never gonna own them but I'm always gonna love them that's where I'm at also did y'all see the new Starless Sea edition that came out that's $300 I'm so upset because that's one of my favorite books ever at this point and I want it so bad but there's no way I would spend $300 on a book like that. It's $300 from Penguin. Not even like, did people already buy it and raise the price? Listen, listen. Is right now the best time to release a $300 book? And it's honestly closer to four for US, but you can't even buy it in the US. It's for Europe only because it's, is it euros? $300 or 300 euros? Or is it pounds? No, I think pounds are just for the British. Anyways, <laughs> this is the dust jacket. I mainly love the spine and the spine that I was saying in the book or in the unboxing part of it's upside down the other parts not so that if you just wanted to flip it and have a different person on your cover you could do that so I chose to put Cal obviously on the front the spine like that and then these losers on the back and but up up bum I'm loving it that is something that I got in the mail and then also this book sleeve that came with it but let me put these back and their safety. And then I also got this beautiful book. Didn't realize it was gonna be so beautiful. Kinda weird that it's so beautiful considering the title, but this is the Patreon book for next month, so that's why I ordered it. And then we have Real Bookish Box. And I am so excited to unbox this. Let's go. So this is their August box. The theme is The Greatest Show on Earth. And oh my, oh my boy, this is beautiful. Like, just the packaging that they do, it's catching some of these other book boxes slipping, to be quite honest. Like, they are doing it's so pretty. And they did send me this for review, which I'm very excited about. And, man, let me just move these. I wonder if I, I kind of really love, because it's got little gold of these squigglies too. I kind of want to get like a jar or something to put those in as a decoration. I don't even know what I'd use it for, but I want to keep them because they're so pretty. Okay, so one of the first things that I see is this pin. It is so beautiful. It says the greatest thing you will ever learn is to just love and be loved in return. I love it. And we have a mask, which is so beautiful. And then we have a <laughs> kind of like, it's a print. It's very small, but I really still like it. And it says a million dreams is all it's gonna take. A million dreams for the world we're gonna make. And it is one of my favorite songs on the movie. I don't like it on the soundtrack, but soundtrack, <laughs> the soundtrack, but I really like it in the movie because I think that it's such a good use of time because a lot of musicals don't use the musical numbers to actually tell the story. They just kind of stops the entire story and then sing. I don't like that. Also, I'm biased. I just love this movie. <laughs> A lot. The Greatest Showman is probably my favorite movie of all time. And then we got Animal Crackers, which is so cute. And now I want to reread this book and eat these. <laughs> Honestly, I just want to eat them in general. And what was this little guy? This is a set of playing cards that are themed for the Greatest Showman characters. We see Zach on the front right there. It is so adorable. And the back is a really cute pattern as well. Then we have two of these coasters. One is of Zach and Zendaya's characters. The the one says why don't we rewrite the stars i love coasters never have enough coasters then one more thing is this really cute bracelet with this elephant on it elephants are actually my favorite animal so i definitely like this and the final thing that i'm very excited to get to 
is the actual book itself. So because I knew that Owlcrate was going to do this book, I did not purchase one myself. But then they came and now I have this beautiful. I think every edition of this book is so beautiful and I love this book so much. I'm gonna spray these edges. I think I'm gonna do them black. I think that that would look really cool. So that is the book. And next month's theme is The Pirate's Life, which I love pirate books so much so i'm very happy with this box i think it was such a good box i think my favorite item honestly no not the mask it's probably these because i love coasters and i love these characters with my whole heart and these characters i always say is the uh, love interest in our main character in this book i literally in my vlog i'll link it when i was reading this for my june arcs vlog i just called them zach and zendaya because and then i made myself not remember the characters actual names but that's fine because this was just such a good, such a beautiful book and people said if you like this then you would definitely like the night circus which now i need to read the night circus honestly but now i just want to reread this <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with me so my camera battery is actually flashing so i will update you on my reading when i get back from barnes and noble and i charge this because yeah didn't think that one through so i'll catch you later child I know you hurt and you can't let go it's not your fault and you don't deserve all the bad in the hurt mm. hello we love an angle camera angle change so we just got home as you can probably tell I have makeup that came off because of my mask. But we picked up some books. Picked up a lot of books. So I'm gonna haul them now. And then we're gonna talk about my current read. Actually, some of these came in the mail. Some of them came in the mail from publishers. Other, uh, I did break my book buying ban for August, but that's okay. Cause we got what, 22 days into the month and I didn't buy anything. That's pretty good. So I got, small spaces this is a middle grade novel i picked this up because of my friend lexi recommending it i picked it up now though because it was three dollars on amazon for this paperback and i was like why not and i really like that rl stein who wrote goosebumps blurbed it on the front because i loved goosebumps when i was growing up so i'm definitely excited for this it's going to be on my september tbr then there's two that i got from people i can't remember if i no there's one i can't remember if i hauled this in a vlog yet but i i don't know i don't know if i did or not but i love sam so i'll keep talking about him anyway so this is from sam says and it is spells and spice lattes it is a coffee witch cozy mystery which i'm trying to get into the cozy mystery genre and i feel like one with a cat and a latte is where i should start honestly so i'm definitely excited thank you sam for getting me this if y'all don't know who sam is do you even watch my channel second of all i'm gonna link him down below you need to go watch because i love his channel his reading rush vlogs Honestly, part of what kept me going during the reading rush, I was struggling with those vlogs. The next two I got from the publisher, and that is The Princess and the Fangirl and Bookish and the Beast. So I read the very first one in this series when it first came out, and I really enjoyed it. I liked that it was kind of centered around a nerdy convention about a space show, and I'm assuming that these kind of just follow the same plot line. Probably the uh, main characters are in the same group of friends as the main character from the second one, or I mean the first one, I'm assuming, because The Princess and the Fangirl is the second one, and then Bookish and the Beast, I believe, is the third one. So so, yeah, I also think this is a good series that I could put into my classroom. So, thank you for sending me these. And also, thank you for sending me these to put in my classroom. Although you didn't know that was going to happen. You just funded a classroom. Look at that. Look at look at that. Next, I have another one I got from the publisher. And that is the Bone Shard Daughter. I was already looking at this one because I saw multiple people on Instagram who I really trust for fantasy recommendations looking at it. I love the cover. I didn't know the spine was this beautiful, but it is and then I get it and I see that Sarah J Mass blurbed it and y'all say what you want about Sarah J Mass. I love her books and if she says it's the best fantasy she's read I'm excited that sounds really good so thank you for this once I actually start reading it I'll give more of a synopsis but 
if you've been on my channel for a little bit, you know, I don't really read summaries. So book hauls are just me really showing you the books. And I always link them down below if you want to go check them out yourself, but I do not blurb. So the next four I just bought at <laughs> Barnes & Noble, along with some birthday books for my partner. But I got Clown in a Cornfield. I got this one because Gabby from Gabby Reads sent me a screenshot of this book. And I think it's a YA horror. And listen, Quinn Maybrook just wants to make it to graduation. She might not make it to morning. Sign me up. This looks, look at this cover. That is so creepy. I'm so excited for this. So September TBR, for sure. I don't want to wait, but I will. Next up, I got the new Sherry Lapina book, The End of Her. I have liked every Sherry Lapina book I've ever read. They're not the most groundbreaking or like gasp worthy, but they're always a good time. I always really like them. I like having reliable thriller authors that I know I'm gonna enjoy. So that is Sherry Lapina for me. Definitely recommend if you have not read some of her work before. I've read A Stranger in the House and it was really, really good. And then there's another one that I read by her recently, but I can't, is it Someone We Know? Yes, I read A Stranger in the House and Someone We Know. Both of those I really liked. An Unwanted Guest has snow on the cover. So I'm saving that for winter because I think maybe it takes place in winter or somewhere I guess it just snows in summer I don't know then I don't listen I don't know anything about this but again I've seen it floating around with a lot of sci-fi fantasy readers that I trust on Instagram and that is the first sister also it's kind of beautiful <laughs> so I'm excited to read this one I think it's about a yeah I'm pretty sure there's a highly trained assassin in this and we know i love assassin not in real life but in books and then the last one is another thriller and it is his and hers i saw chelsea from chelsea darling Reads is hosting a read-along of this i believe for libro fm maybe not sure but she was hosting one on instagram and i've seen a lot of people really like this so i decided to pick it up because it is thriller time of the year for sure i mean i read thrillers all the time but i read them a lot in august september and october sometimes i drag them out into november because i don't want to admit that halloween's over so yeah that is the haul so now let's talk about not the fact that i broke another book buying ban let's talk about books so the cassette girls <sighs> Listen, y'all, I'm 127 pages in chapter 15 and nothing has happened. So I like that it is set in New Orleans. That's kind of the only thing that's driving me and keeping me going. Aside from the fact when I was editing my vlog last week, I realized that I didn't finish my thought about Stephanie Garber. So I went to the Stephanie Garber signing and we were talking about books that we like. And I said, I like New Orleans and witches and I wanted books with that. And that was before the beautiful came out and she recommended this. So the reason I'm so going with this is because one of my favorite authors recommended it to me literally and then also because it said New Orleans and there's witches I mean those are literally some of my favorite things in books so I'm really holding out hope that it's just an incredibly slow build up but man I'm not gonna be able to not mention that like I feel like 130 pages into a book something should happen and I know that this is almost a 600 page book but I'm kind of like <laughs> why <laughs> I feel like so much of this is so mundane and so slow building. Like it, I don't know. I guess I do prefer that not all of it's happening in like three days, like why it typically does. But I feel like the writing, she could have done it by weeks instead of each chapter is a day. So it's like October 9th, chapter one, October 10th, chapter two, and so on and so forth. So I'm on chapter 15 and it is only October 21st. But man, it feels like I'm going through the month with her because it's going so slow. And I'm glad that not everything's happening in like one day and all of a sudden, you know, she's a witch. But I feel like it could happen in two weeks. <laughs> this feels like it's been going on for such a long time. So I'm still reading it. I saw a couple people comment that they never saw anybody talk about this book on booktube. And I am talking about it, but I gotta mention that it is so slow. But I'm not DNFing it because I don't really DNF books unless I'm 50% of the way through and I'm still not liking it. So if I get to page 250 or probably more like 270 or so and I'm not having a good time, it's probably gonna go. And the thing is, I know that we're going to get to a probably boarding school east setup and if it's too cringy <laughs> I might have to go and it may be that I just need to listen to the audiobook but honestly I feel like the audiobook of this would make it feel even slower so love this uh yeah 
I'm trying. Not a lot of progress is being made, honestly. Every time it's leading up to a readathon, which Summerween is next week, every time it's leading up to a readathon, I feel like I don't make a whole lot of progress with reading because it's like I'm chilling out to gear up to really read the next week. I don't know. Logic, who knows it? I don't. So sidebar about Summerween, my friend sent me this beautiful book sleeve. This is from Happy Go Lovely Sleeves on Instagram. I will link it down below. I need to remember to actually show you this, but at night the skeletons glow in the dark. And these are probably my favorite book sleeves of all time. They're just great. The only other ones that I like are the ones that come in book boxes where they have zippers on the top. But for just sleeves of everyday use, anytime I want to use them, I go with these. She has the cutest, most like such a good padding inside, but not overdone and it's stiff enough that it keeps the shape which I don't know why I care about that but I do and then there's always a pocket which I like because I put my tabs in there so that is something I wanted to show you because she sent me that for Summerween and I think she's sending one to Gabby too which I just think is so cute and so nice so yeah I'm really glad everyone's excited for this and I'm actually reading the school of good and evil this is what I'm gonna read tonight during the uh, reading sprints live stream that I'm gonna be doing and I'm on page 144 which I think is like chapter chapter 9. Yeah, I'm on chapter 9. I picked this up because my friend Lexi, this is one of her favorite books ever, I think. And it's also their book club book. And so I really wanted to read it because I want to actually, I go to every live show, but I don't know what we're talking about. I'm just there and I'm having a good time because um, they're my friends. I don't know what we're talking about. And I spoil myself for every book because I still don't know what we're talking about. But this one I actually wanted to read. I have the next two in the series as well. So I want to not spoil myself and actually read this one. And I'm really liking it. I kind of so what happens is we have our these are our two main characters and there is a town that they live in it's a really small town and there's a rumor that every I think four years or so a school master comes and kidnaps two kids takes them away and they think that it's having to do with the storybooks that they have, like Snow White storybooks. And so these two get kidnapped one year. The blonde wants to be in the good school. And then this one doesn't want to be there at all. And she she's the one that ends up in the good school. And this one ends up in the villain school. And honestly, I really like how this is being told. Because I love that she is doing good things for selfish reasons. And because she thinks that she's good, so she's not actually good. And then she's just a good person, but she is judged harshly because of what she looks like. So to me, this reads, first of all, it reads like a book that I think a lot of my students would enjoy reading. But it also reads almost like satire making fun of people in general and I just am really liking it to me it's not coming across as like oh if you look this way you must be in this place it comes across as like that's how society is in the book which is how society is in real life and she's a product of it and she is because she thinks that she deserves to be an evil because of how she looks and what she's been treated like her whole life and Honestly, she's kind of a terrible friend. Like, I I like this character a lot, but I, Sophie, I like her a lot, but not because she's a good character. Like, she's a good character in the sense of her writing, character building, all of that great but in the sense of like as a person she's not good she should not be in the good house at all or in the good castle kingdom school at all and yeah i'm really liking it i think it's a fun read i'm definitely con gonna continue on with the series so far but that's really oh no i'm listening to an audiobook so yesterday i finished these witches won't burn and or these witches don't burn and this was a four star for me i really really liked it that's what the live show is for tonight we're going to talk about that book and then do reading sprints but then i picked up ghostwood song this is a book that i've wanted to pick up for a while um it was on one of my videos i think with anticipated releases of 2020 i'm not sure i'm not gonna lie it was because of the cover i had no clue what it was about but i saw a snake a creepy forest and the word ghost was in the title so i was like probably i will like and i do indeed like it a lot i picked up the audiobook specifically because it's set in a southern 
setting and their accents are so good. It has really deep southern accents, but they're not twangy southern accents. They're kind of like, if you've ever seen the show True Blood, it's the southern accents that are on there and I absolutely love those accents. It's part of the reason I love the show True Blood so freaking much. And this book is such an interesting concept. Yeah, so this follows our main character, Shady Grove, and her father passed down the ability to call the dead with a fiddle and so she wants to make it her mission to find the fiddle because her brother has been accused of something that she knows he didn't do and in order to prove his innocence she wants to use the fiddle to call forth the dead and prove that she was right and that he did not do what they said he did but I'm being kind of vague about it because I don't want to tell you anything of what it is about other than what you, like what Goodreads says I did pull it up to make sure that I didn't say a spoiler by accident but there is a weird love triangle so Shady has a crush on a girl but then also Shady has another love interest so it, there's like a love triangle going on but the person she has a crush on I cannot stand their character at all and this happened in these witches don't burn as well where it's just like I think what I'm realizing is I can't stand like the selfishness that is in some of these books it's it's that thing of like when you listen to someone saying something and you're just thinking do you do you know what you sound like when you're saying this and so for instance it's just this one uh, here how how can i hmm how can i don't know how to explain it without spoilers because I don't want to talk about anything specific but basically Shady wanted to do something and the friend was like basically saying no you have to stay with us out of loyalty or something like that and all I could think was like she girl Shady walk away what is she gonna do hold you back I don't think so <laughs> I don't think I do not think so very much at all no uh yeah I don't that doesn't make sense unless you've read it but I'm working on being vaguer with my descriptions because I don't personally like knowing too much going into books so if you do like knowing too much click on the link down below so you can go look at the summary but if you don't welcome to Olivia Vague's latte I guess I don't even know but it's really good super atmospheric uh it reminds me a lot and this is in the blurb of it has the creepy forest factor and the sapphic factor of Saw Kill Girls which I absolutely adored Saw Kill Girls go read it audiobook preferably if you can and then um, the writing and the vibe and the feeling like the southern feeling of beautiful creatures I don't care what anyone says I liked that movie it was bad but in like a good way and I liked the first book I never continued on with the series though because I feel like it's one of those first books that I really liked it I liked where it could have gone and then when I heard where it went I was like never mind so I just stick with the first book so that I don't have to know but I did look up spoilers what happens in the end of that series and I was like that's right up there at the Legion why for what purpose so yeah that's what I'm reading right now right now I need to go edit two videos I have an Illumicrate unboxing to edit which was the one that I mentioned earlier and I'm super excited about and then my scary books the books that scare me the most video which I was gonna get up today but then I was really tired yesterday because we went over to my mom's to watch Halloween the original Halloween because my partner's never seen it and I've seen it a lot so is my mom I've seen a lot because of my mom, but I was just so tired after that. I didn't even want to think about editing a video. So it's actually going to go up tomorrow, but it will be up by now. So I'll link it because why not? Just all the links, link everything. Because I know that I have a bad habit of saying, I'll link it down below and I don't remember. I've started, I have a piece of paper. This one needs to go. I need a new piece of paper. But every single time I'm editing a video, I have so many things that I write down. And I'm like, man, I really need to stop saying I'm going to link everything. Because you could just... My description is just a novella every time I post a video. But... I do get a lot of comments that say thank you for linking every book you talk about so I hope that it helps I really do because if not I don't know what I'm doing but with that being said I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna edit these videos and it's gonna be a good time so ta-ta hear the birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done all the good times just begun Hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright 
hello i look rough <laughs> I know, there's a sleeping Jake. I just got done filming a bullet journal video. I finished filming my September setup, which I am so, so excited about. It looks so pretty. I'll show y'all a little sneak peek. It is inspired by one of the bullet journals or follow on Instagram. Pretty much every single theme I do is inspired by someone because I like to try and practice drawing and stuff. So I just messaged her and I was like, hey, could I do a theme inspired by you? And she said yes, so I did. And it is a kind of dreamy cloud-ish thing. It'll be easier to see what I'm talking about in the actual video, but I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. It's pretty cute. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a September monthly to-do list spread because I need to do that. And basically it's gonna be kind of a brain dump page where every single thing I need to do that month for YouTube, Patreon, the book clubs, and Discord is going to be on there because I'm going to try <laughs> to organize a read-along of it by Stephen King in the Discord. So if you joined for the, the Priory of the Orange Tree read-along in Discord, I made a channel that was basically where you could talk about it before you started it. Then at, for each section that we read, I had a channel that were spoilers through that section, but up until the next section. So section one, you could talk about spoilers through section one up to the starting point of section two. So I think I got, I've got a lot of comments <laughs> and uh, DMs and stuff about different big books people want to tackle and how we could break it up in the Discord. And I think it's a great idea. I kind of fell off the Discord, I'm not even going to lie because of school starting i just literally would get home and not even want to look at my phone unless i was watching tiktok because i didn't want to even think i was so tired so yeah now that i've got my together i think that that would be fine that was a good idea that was one of the main books i got recommended to do one for so if you did i did read your dm or comment and then I am going to try to make it happen. I just have to see if, how it's gonna be broken up. But it's like a 1200 page book and I think, let me look in my planner since that's right freaking here. October has one, two, three, four, five weeks. So just divide the book by five. That's what I'm gonna do. So technically it will begin probably on September 30th or 29th, whichever one that is on that Monday, that October 1st is also in that week. So there will be details to that. I'll probably post a video, but I'm actually gonna post in the Discord today. Sorry I disappeared, school's been rough, but I'm gonna create that. And then I'm also gonna have any other recommendations that y'all want for that. And that is the Buddy Reads a Latte Discord. If you're in my description, it is under the links portion that just says Discord. All you do is click on the link and you can join it. Um, I ha was sorting people into Harry Potter houses. I have not done it since the stuff with Harry Potter came out, but I will still do it if you want me to do it. I you just comment on the introduction portion and I'll go through those soon and do that. But I know I can get a bot to do it. I just don't want to set the bot up. Honestly, I'm just so tired. But I didn't realize there's about 500 people in the Discord. I don't know if that's a lot of people for a Discord. I never had Discord, but that's a lot of people to me. And I feel really bad that I kind of just passed out for the last two months on there. But I think I am going to do that for the It book. And hopefully that will get me back on track. And I think that if I just create a list, I'll be fine. I just... I keep doing this thing where I'm not using my journal and it's because I don't want to bring it to work because I don't want it to be around people who could infect me or basically I just don't want to bring things to work that I use all the time that I don't want to have to effectively quarantine. I really don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to be as safe as possible with what I have and what I have is not a lot, but <laughs> yeah. I am going, um, so I was looking at my old journal and it's pretty full. I just ordered a B5 or a B6 from Archer and Olive to do a new project in that I will be posting here that I'm excited about. 
And we're gonna see how that goes. Because I don't want to say too much about it because if I do, then I won't do it. Because I'll be like, oh, well, I already told him about it, so I don't need to do it. <laughs> I don't... Genuinely, my logic is so lacking, and I think it's the lack of sleep. I think I'm getting, like, four or five hours of sleep on the week, days, and then I just pass out for the entire weekend. It's great. So... Reading wise, I have not done any more reading because I did the live show last night and then I was just doing editing and filming today. So this is kind of the worst reading vlog ever. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I did get a little bit further into Ghostwood song and I really like where this book is going. I'm afraid though. I think it's a standalone, which I like. I'm really finding I like young adult mystery-esque standalones, but I'm afraid that I'm not going to like the ending. But I'm, I honestly, I think that's just my fear from my past relationships with these books. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, now I'm going to make that page and make that list so I can feel better. I don't know if y'all have this, but when I start to feel a little anxious, especially on Sundays, I know this is a thing for teachers for sure, but you get like the Sunday blues of having to go back to work. But also there's that Sunday anxiety of like, okay, so what am I going to do for the next week? And whenever they have a professional development day on a Monday, it, it's nice because you start the week slow, like you're back to work, but you're not really doing a whole lot of you're not doing any teaching at all, honestly. But then it throws me off because I'd rather just be teaching personally. So it makes me feel weird, but I'm getting kind of a little antsy. So I think if I make a list of everything I gotta do, I'll be good. But I am ahead on a lot of my to-do stuff for August. So if I can get ahead just in general, that would be great. So Jake and I are gonna go. Hey Jake, don't go outside. Do you see how quickly he wakes up? <laughs> Come here. Come here. Hello. Hello. You don't want to say hi? Oh, hello. That's a handsome boy. <laughs> wow, so tired. He's taken um, three naps today. And if that is not the goal of life, I don't know what it is. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show. Because... I've talked about it on every other social media platform I have, which is just uh, one other, and that's Instagram. But I'm listening to this podcast, Creepy Caffeine, and you need to listen to it. It's really good. <laughs> I listened to one episode a while ago, and I was just like, uh, yes, I like this. But then I realized I need to actually listen to audiobooks and get some reading done because I'm a booktube channel. But then I wanted to film this today. And I was feeling in the mood for paranormal. And I didn't want to watch paranormal YouTube because it's hard to pay attention to YouTube videos while I'm doing bullet journaling. Because if I look at the video, I'm going to mess up my journal. And that'll be a whole thing because it has to be perfection. Which is not true because if you look at this journal, it is not perfection. But I put this on. These are two of my favorite people right now. I will tell you, I love this. If I have always wanted to do a podcast, but I never wanted to do the work. And so it's like I'm listening to the podcast I would have wanted to make, but I don't have to do any of the work. And I can't tell you how amazing that feels. So I'm going to link it down below. I listen on Spotify. I'm sure it's on other podcast platforms, but I'm going to link it so that you guys can listen because they are hilarious and amazing. Now I'm gonna go do what I actually said I was gonna do and it's gonna be a great time and I'll see you later. Goodbye, peace and blessings.